get to this fight. Ihr seid nicht nur Kameraden, ihr seid nicht nur meine Schüler, ihr seid meine Familie. So I'm gonna climb right to the top. I'm gonna take that gold. And I'm gonna do it with a style. Markus und ich, wir hatten letztes Jahr die Titel schon. Wir haben das Gold schon an Bord geholt und wir haben es doch wieder verloren. Battles. Mudo. Last man standing. Ladies and Gentlemen, herzlich willkommen zu Unlimited Wrestling Talk Chapter! Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to Unlimited Wrestling Dark Chapter. I am your host, Rico Bushido, the voice of champions, and tonight things are going to get dark. But in all that darkness, let's see if we can spot a little ray of sunshine. We're starting out with the man, the founder, the foundation. Sharp dressed man tonight. Of course, I'm talking about Martin Guerrero, the owner of Unlimited Wrestling. You can see that he's been hanging out with me. I've been giving him a couple of, uh, you know, tips on how to dress, how to appear as a sharp dressed man. Of course, your boy Rico Bushido always suits up when he steps into the arena at Unlimited Wrestling. So does Martin Guerrero. This is going to be an important night for Unlimited Wrestling. And we know that every time we see this man, he hits us with a surprise. Das Aussehen ist sein Job. Einen wunderschönen guten Tag, Freunde. Ihr wisst Bescheid, wenn ihr mich hier im Anzug seht, dann wird es sehr interessant, es gibt neue Infos, es gibt sehr schöne Ankündigungen für uns. Und letztes Jahr, am Anfang des Jahres, kam ich hier raus und habe euch über Restival berichtet. Wer von euch war da? How amazing was that, ladies and gentlemen, Restival. Natürlich wird es auch dieses Jahr wieder ein Restival geben. Und ich habe die Ehre, euch schon den ersten Namen für dieses Jahr bekannt zu geben. Wer ist der Wrestler, der hier nach Thale kommt? Und es ist dieser hier. Drum Rolls! Oh yeah! Impact Wrestling World Champion Josh Alexander wird hier in Thale bei Wrestle sein. What did I tell you guys? Every time he steps out. Aber das ist nicht das Einzige, worüber wir reden müssen. Ihr merkt ja, Unlimited Wrestling wird immer professioneller, wird immer größer. Wir haben ausverkauftes Haus. Geil! Sold out, ladies and gentlemen. Und ich habe angefangen, mir immer mehr Teams einzurichten. Wir haben ein Team für den Merchandise-Bereich. Wir haben ein Team für die Bestuhlung. Wir haben ein Team für den Ringaufbau. Wir haben ein Team für die Kameras, wir haben ein Team für den Livestream, wir sind nämlich live on Pay-Per-View. Andere müssen dafür ihre Seele verkaufen. Bam, bam. Und natürlich passieren hier im Ring auch immer mal wieder so Sachen, wo man reagieren muss. Und es ist ein kleines Problem für mich, weil ich kann nicht gleichzeitig hier draußen sein, und da hinten sein, um mich für mein Match vorzubereiten. Das heißt, ich stand vor der schweren Entscheidung, ob ich mich aufs Wrestling oder aufs General Manager sein beschränke. 
Und Freunde, ich bin Wrestler. Und das heißt, mit sofortiger Wirkung gebe ich jegliche Machtposition, jegliche Aufgaben als Chef von Unlimited Wrestling ab. Uh. Und natürlich brauche ich jemanden, der diesen Posten übernehmen kann. Jemand, den ich vertraue. Jemand, der hier big. alles regeln kann. Der immer da ist. This is Und derjenige big. ist... Fabs! Oh! Somebody we know! Somebody we know and love! Somebody that we see in this ring every time! Fabius Titus! Also behandelt meine Liga gut! Führe sie ehrenhaft! Viel Spaß damit! Martin Guerrero! Okay, da denke ich mir was aus. Habt ihr Bock auf Kampf Nummer 1? Ja! Dann legen wir jetzt endlich los, oder? Ja! Der folgende Kampf ist ein Singles Match, angesetzt auf einen Fall. And here we go with that horrible predator. That submission ultra. The man that turned his back on his mentor. Auf dem Weg zum Ring. Er kommt aus Haldes Leben mit einem Gewicht von 75 Kilogramm. Submission Ultra. As Herbie Forrest steps on the stage behind him, you see two other figures appear. Er kommt zum Ring in Begleitung von Red Cat und Chris Titan. The former Kung Fu brand is here to put the final nail in the coffin of their former mentor, their leader, the person that guided them to the place where they are right now. The person that made them the killers that they are right now. The person that made Herbie Farah relentless always motivating his pupil, turning him, into, turning him into a relentless assassin. The same goes for Chris Titan. Chris Titan, the powerhouse from Leipzig, the guy that is now holding a glass of whiskey. And you see Red Cat holding that cactus These people are obviously here to mock Nicholas Klut. And the whiskey is being poured into a cactus. Symbolically, Here we go. 
We see Berlin on the screen, and we know that everywhere this man goes, we are in Berlin. It is the one and only King Klux. Flaschen Whisky. Er ist die Berliner Schnauze. Nikolaus Glut. Nikolaus Glut got his shot of whiskey in. Well, I don't know if it's his first shot of whiskey of the day. But this guy is ready. He is motivated to kick some ass. This guy came to settle a score. This guy came down to get even. King fucking Clue. How would you feel? Just think about it, ladies and gentlemen. How would you feel if your team betrayed you after you did everything you could for them. You gave them the shirt of your back, but still they choose to betray you because they were ambitious, because they were jealous. And look at, oh, and now Red Cat is blocking his way as Clue goes for his microphone and Herb and Farah, that's it, they know him. He's become predictable. Now they know his weak points. Now they know the points where he doesn't pay attention. That's the problem. He spent so much time with these people. But hey, look at this. Clue now. A loading on Herbie Farah. A loading. Smashing his head against the turnbuckle. Oh my god. He's got revenge in his eyes and he's hell bent on getting even. Herbie Farah, who of course is a lot, even, he's, even though he's gained some size, he's a smaller man than Nicholas Clue. So he will seize every opportunity he can to sneak attack or sucker punch Nicholas Klug, which he did in the beginning with a terrific distraction by Red Cat. Klug should have known. He should have known. He turned them into these killers, these devious wrestlers. They take shortcuts because he taught them how to take shortcuts. And now Klug. Whipping in, Herbie Farr and Herbie Farr and now begging off into the corner. Begging Clue, please, please do not hurt me. Please do not hurt me. Come on, Clue, do not fall for this. Do not fall for this. And now low kick. Very nice low kick to the back of the knee. Kick to the ricks of Nicholas Clue. Nicholas Clue. Oh, those kicks had some impact because Clue went down fast and now trying to choke Clue through the ropes is Herbie Farah. Herbie Farah, of course, the submission on trend. Oh, look at these two now. Still working together as a cohesive unit, even though they're not members of the Clute brand anymore. Herbie Farah now. Taking every shortcut in the book, and there's Red Cat using Red Cat axe handles on Nicholas Clue. Now, Clue hammering back, going low, going up high. Nice hook there to the jaw. And Clue needs to be wary. As soon as you have physical contact with a guy like Herbie Farr, you are in danger of being lulled to sleep and getting trapped in one of those submissions. This guy works as a snake, as a constricting snake. Now, Herbie Farr now. Push kicks. Front kicks pushing up. Far to the chest of Nicholas Clute. Softening him up. Softening him up for perhaps submission attempt. 
wouldn't it be something though if Herbie Farr were to topple his own mentor here tonight? Wouldn't that be something? It would definitely mean a step up for Herbie Vara. And I think that that is the motivation behind the entire Clute brand turning on Nicholas Clute, abandoning him because they want to take their next step. And as long as their leader is blocking their way, as long as he is standing in front of their, what they think is their limelight, they wouldn't have gotten where they perhaps are today. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is it is it the correct way to go about it though to betray somebody? I know it it happens a lot in professional wrestling because a lot of wrestlers, you know, are ambitious. There is not a lot of spots at the top. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of room up there. So a lot of wrestlers are just cutthroat in their behavior. You see it in teams. You've seen it all throughout history, but. This one in particular was very devastating because before Unlimited Wrestling, nobody had ever heard of Herbie Farr or Chris, Christy Tom or Red Cat. And it was Nicholas Clute who guided them, who, who, who made it possible for them to face experienced opponents, have fights, had, had, you know, he put them in positions where they had to fend for themselves, had to fight for their lives. He taught them so much. So I never expected them to turn on him the way they did. But they did, and that's why we are here today, ladies and gentlemen. It is student versus teacher. It is Nicholas Clute against his former brand. And Nicholas Clute now kicking out. Herbie Farr is already busted over. He's got a bloody nose. Nicholas Clute, I remember riding with him last year and him, he telling me about his boxing classes, how he wanted to evolve as an athlete, how he wanted to be more all-rounded, more, more versatile. So he took boxing lessons, heavy back, sparring. And that pays off because Herbie Farah's nose is already busted open. But still, Herbie Farah. You see that bust? That was almost a brain buster. That suplex was almost a bra brain buster. That's how snappy he executed. Herbie Farah now. Dominating this match with the help of his partners on the outside. But will he be able to keep this up? Will he be able to, to keep this slow methodical pace up where he just decimates King Clue because his breath is being restricted right now. His nose is bleeding and as soon as he, as he blows that nose his eyes are just going to swell up. That's what happens with a broken up. He will be physical, he won't be able to see a thing if his eyes swell up. Everything is connected to your nose in that region. Your eyes, your mouth your sinuses, everything. Now Herbie Vara is going to work his submission game. Again, softening up. Softening up Nicholas Clute. And he is allowing Clute an awful lot of time to recover. Why is Herbie Vara playing mind games? Why is he not more aggressive in trying to put uh, Nicholas Clute away? He must have a strategy. He must have a battle plan because Clute is getting aggravated. Clute, Clute is turning red. Clute is really, really, really trying to restrain himself from snapping because he is a very methodical, a very cerebral wrestler that knows that as soon as you let yourself go, you can get blown up real, 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 real fast in that, in that ring. And now, Clute, two close lines into the turnbuckle. Oh, and another clothesline. Talking about softening up your opponent. The Berliner Schnauzer now is giving uh, Herbie Farr a little taste of his own medicine. And now, the big bull. The big bull tried to get involved. And, and Nicholas Blue didn't even wait for the referee to set him away. He just dispatched of him himself. the crowd now 
Standing firmly behind Nicholas Klug, the man who they anointed almost to be the people's champion of unlimited wrestling. Whether he has a belt or not, it doesn't really make any difference at this point. If you look at the, uh, the popularity of Nicholas Klug as he brings down the knee, one, two, wow, almost got him there. Wouldn't that be a statement? Nicholas Klug now. Setting up Herbie Vara for the Liger Bomb. If he gets his, no, Herbie Vara slides through into a guillotine. He's got his legs now wrapped around the midsection of Nicholas Klute. All he has to do is wrap those tie those legs together, wrap them up into a body scissors. There will be no way for Klute to escape. However, his legs are still wide enough. Klute uses sheer power. To just lift him out of that. Just a throwing suplex that was unbelievable. And now the Liger Bomb perhaps, yes! Klutz gets it, Klutz gets it, and that's no! So close, so close, yet no cigar. Nicholas Klutz now. Signaling that the end is near. Going to give Lil Herbie Vara another ride. And this perhaps will be his final one. No, Herbie Vara now slides underneath. Cat is right there. Kloot now hesitating. Doesn't want to doesn't want to physically assault. Uh, what are we doing here? Look at Herbie Vara now. Being out wrestled by Nicholas Kloot. That distraction completely worked against him. Herbie Vara had his opportunity, and there's Red Cat again, and now, now this referee has got to intervene. And now Herbie Vara is tapping out. Ref, ref, come on, ref. Herbie Vara just tapped out. He just tapped out in that cross face, and the referee is now still arguing with Red Cat, and now that big bull from Leipzig. Oh, Titan Falls. Titan falls, and Clute cannot get back to his feet. Clute is, Clute is gone, and now Herbie Vara just smashed his armpit against the back of Clute's head. One, two, three. That's it. That's disgusting. Come on. That's it. Referee. Give me this as much as we are pinfall. Submission Ultra, Herbie Vara! So, no doubt this was a hard-fought matchup. And now Herbie Vara really brought his A-game. But in the end, let's be honest, this is where he taps. But then that big bull hit Clue with the Titan Falls. I don't think it was the... The armpit of her before that was the expl expl exclamation point. Exclamation point. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is travesty. What is going on? It was the Titan Falls. It was Red Cat. It was... It, 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 it was all the above. All the above. It's the way they got taught. That's the way they won. Nicholas Clute, you play with fire, you get burned. And I think that's the lesson he can take away from this. But, ladies and gentlemen, I have a feeling that this one, this fight, this battle is far from over. Alles schon dabei, Härte, Blut, so soll es heute Abend sein. Ja, und bevor wir jetzt zum ersten Titelmatch des heutigen Abends kommen, habe ich an eine Person da hinten Backstage, der diesen einen Titel hält, was zu sagen. Ja, ich gucke jetzt mal in die Kamera. Koray, ich weiß, du guckst gerade Backstage auf deinen Bildschirm, ja, und guckst jetzt, wann soll ich raus? 
Ich habe ja heute zwei Gegner, Ladder Match. Ich habe Infos für dich. Du glaubst, ja, du glaubst, du stehst über den Regeln. Du glaubst, du stehst über Unlimited Wrestling. Tust du nicht. Und meine erste neue Regel oder mein erstes Movement als neuer General Manager wird sein, dass du heute nicht zwei Gegner hast. Du wirst auch keine drei Gegner haben. Du wirst vier Gegner haben. Ich habe da hinten Backstage nämlich zwei hungrige Jungs stehen, die heute noch nichts zu tun haben. Und der eine davon ist Corey McRae. Und der zweite, den habt ihr heute schon einmal gesehen. Der hat mich hier heute zum General Manager gemacht. Der hat sich selbst nie in irgendein Titelmatch gebuckt. Ja? Und deshalb mache ich das jetzt. Und darum ist der folgende Kampf ein Five-Way-Ladder-Match. Und es geht um die Unlimited Challenge Championship. Talking about weighing down the law. Fabs just told Kurai what was up. Not only does he have to, uh, to defend his title, he has to defend his title against multiple opponents tonight. And that serves him right because he thinks he can do whatever he wants, but that's not the case because Fabs is in charge now. As we look at the first man entering this match, this match for the challenge championship ladies and gentlemen we've seen it time and time again when the challenge champion uh, when the unlimited wrestling challenge championship is on the line nine times out of ten the holder of that title does not know who his opponent or opponents will be well Kawhi kind of messed up after his attacks backstage tonight so Fabius Titus decided to lay down the law in his new role as manager here at Unlimited Wrestling. We have a new man in charge. I love it. I love it. And look at this man, Tempesta. What a giant, what a beast of a man. Look at that mask. He's growling a little bit. There's a bit of mouth breathing going on there. Look at this. Nice tribute to Axe and Smash from Demolition. It's like a gladiator inspired type wardrobe. Very nice. Bit of BDSM going on. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's just quit while we're here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen this guy, he is what they call a mob. Flash, Morgan Webster, making waves on the UK scene, making waves in NXT UK. Got his own brand of fashion. But he is all about that look. What he is also all about is all about competition. He had a little run in with Karai earlier. But when I see him jumping up and down, I think he's ready. I think he's ready to dish out some, uh, some subculture punishment.
Well, we all now we now know who is next. The man who just got named. The man with a mean streak. We've seen him before here at Unlimited Wrestling. And we found out that this is a guy who doesn't shy away from a fight. No, 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 let's put it a little bit different. This is a guy that comes out looking for a fight. That's one of those uh, original Unlimited Wrestling titles you can order now. But will he hold the real one after tonight, Corey McGray? Walking around barefoot, He's not protecting the bottom of his feet, but he is protecting his shin. Very interesting. Next time I'll talk to this guy, I'll, I'll ask him what his motivation behind that is. Interesting foot attire. All right, well, he named Fabius Titus as the new general manager at Unlimited Wrestling. And then Fabius Titus returned to favor by making him a challenger in this match for the Challenge Championship. Well, every time we see this guy, I always tell you guys one thing. This is the man that could pull a rabbit out of a hat. Of course, he is the owner of Unlimited Wrestling. Nice outfit. Martin Guerrero shaking hands with Flash Morgan Webster, eyeing his other opponents. Looks like the battle lines are being drawn in the sand already, and we are yet to see the champ step out. And here we go. Nothing but bad attitude. Nothing but bad attitude. Where's his, where's his title? Where's that belt? Am I missing something here? No, he is. Where's his title? Did he, did he pawn that somewhere? Did he, did, did he sell it on eBay? What? This guy's completely disrespectful some reason calls himself the baby's face assassin. He doesn't look like a baby face I know. Never seen a baby with a beard anyway. Very sturdy, strong, built on the very athletic Karai. Guy's got an unbelievable pace. He's got a great tank of gas. Bevor wir loslegen, hier noch einmal die Regeln für ein Ladder Match. Gewonnen hat der, oh, der schafft, die Leiter nach oben zu klettern, match. den Gürtel abzuhängen. Und dieser Mann ist dann neuer Unlimited Wrestling Challenge Champion. Ich stelle euch die Runde der Gentlemen hier einmal vor. Der erste Herausforderer. Von Monster Island mit einem Gewicht von 108 Kilogramm. 
Tempesta! The Monster Island. Tempesta. What a big boy, is it? Herausforderer Nummer 2. From a town called Malice. Mit einem Gewicht von 170 Pfund. Flash Morgan Webster! Flash Morgan Webster from a town called Malice came a guy named Alice. Here we go. Herausforderer Nummer 3 aus Essex, England. Nicht aus einer schmutzigen Stadt wie dieser soll ich ausrichten. Fabius doesn't need Mit einem Gewicht von 185 Pfund. Corey McRae! You got moves? You got a fighting Und chance this time. Und Herausforderer like Nummer 4. Er kommt aus Halberstadt. Mit einem Gewicht von 87 Kilogramm. Martin Guerrero! There's the guy everybody wants to see pin Corral. Wir zum amtierenden, verteidigenden, unlimited challenge champion aus Berlin, Charlottenburg, mit einem Gewicht von 92 Kilogramm. Er ist der Babyface Killer, Korai. Ja, Korai is actually spitting at people now. This guy is like, if disrespect had a face, it would be Karai's face. From Charlottenburg, Berlin. That's West Berlin, ladies and gentlemen. Proudly, he probably represents those streets and he fights like it too, because this guy can go. This Karai guy, he's a killer. He is an assassin. Earlier on, I wondered why the the title wasn't around his waist, but it was already suspended above the ring. So this is a ladder match five-way, ladies and gentlemen, for the challenge championship. The very first of its kind here at Unlimited Wrestling, but every time there are firsts for Unlimited Wrestling as we keep on growing, we keep on expanding, and we keep on selling out, baby. And not in the way that Martin Guerrero referred to when he was talking about the pay-per-view earlier on tonight. That really cracked me up as Morgan Webster now, Corey McGray, the English guys are taking each other on here in the middle of the ring in Germany. And now Flash Morgan Webster showing his moves. Sorry I called you Alice earlier, bro. Look at that. Boom. Doesn't fight like a guy named Alice. He fights like a guy called Flash Morgan Webster. Oh, takes one on the neck from Corey McGray. He's being whipped into the ring of the ropes now by Martin Guerrero, who does his trademark jumping up calf kick. Now hoisting him, fireman's position. Boom. Oh, that jaw is starting to get sore now of Corey McGray. Let's see how his chin holds up. He can dish it out, but can he take it? That's the question. Martin Guerrero, please turn around. The monster is in the ring. Look at a forearm. Look at those shoulders. Those shoulders look like Monster Island if, 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 if Martin gets stuck on there, man. Unbelievable. You just get elevated from the ground. It's like you're li being lifted up a skyscraper. That's how big this guy is. And now, heart knee. Heart feet trigger knee to the chin. To the jawline of Martin Guerrero. And now, the big man coming outside. What is he doing? He's going to eat a child from the crowd. He's got his mouth open. Tempesta going for that ladder, but Karai was right there. That was the opportunity he was waiting for. Karai, the babyface assassin, as he likes to call himself, is ever the opportunist. That's the thing that brought him to the dance. That's the thing that made him become the Unlimited Wrestling Challenge Champion. And now Flash Morgan Webster is there to stop him. Martin Guerrero now. Trying to stop Karai. I like how Karai is just fighting people off. This guy's tough. Corey McGray now stopping Martin Guerrero. 
Martin Guerrero getting tossed out of the ring. And now, Corey McGray. What an opportunity for him. Going up that ladder barefoot. Flaz Morgan Webster now, right there. Pushing that chair into Corey McGray. But Corey McGray catches it now, pushing it back and forth. Both men catching it. Both men now fighting for the ladder. Very crafty by Flash Morgan Webster as he slides through with drop kick type maneuver. Now climbs the ladder. And that's where Karai comes in. You see, just Karai just waits, paces, saves his energy, and as soon as he's ready, he unloads. He unloads. And I think that's the secret. To his, to his incredible battery, to his motor, to that dynamo. Because that guy just keeps on going. He knows how to pace himself. I mean, he's not the most athletic built, athletically gifted human being when it comes to the way he is built. But this guy is such a great athlete. And that's you can tell that by the way he moves around. By the way he just demolishes his opponents. Doesn't respect anybody. Doesn't care about anybody only cares about himself and right now about remaining the unlimited wrestling challenge champion big man now oh he's putting that ladder aside big man wants a little confrontation there and karai now it's like karai is running into a brick wall and trying to punch his way through it maybe you shouldn't hit his chest karai Maybe you should go up a little higher if you can reach it. Because this guy, again, how tall is this guy? He's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and now everybody's in the ring. Corey McGray. Corey McGray now arguing with Karai, trying to make a little pact to bond. Karai now letting himself get suckered into running at that monster. And now everybody is taking a shot at Karai. Flash Morgan Webster now with that European. Oh, quadruple super kick to the skull of Karai. It's being rolled out of the ring now by Tempesta, the monster, that BDSM beast. The grotesque gimp from the depths of hell. And now, Tempesta, Martin Guerrero, Flash Morgan Webster, Corey McGray is being dispatched to the outside now. And now, it's Flash chopping the beast again. Look at those arms. Where did they find this guy? Look at him, look at him move. He looks like Frank, he moves like Frankenstein's monster as well. the type of guy that will just come at you no matter what you throw at him, man. You have to fire rocket, rockets at that guy's dome. And now, Martin Guerrero is in the ring. Oh! Very nice moonsault by Flash Morgan Webster. Taking a, taking a quite a risk there by doing it so snappy out of nowhere, almost killing himself in the process. Oh, and now to the ribs with that ladder. That monster is holding that ladder, and the ladder just he wields it as a kendo stick. That's how powerful he is. Luckily, he doesn't know up from down and down from up, so he's all confused, giving Martin Guerrero the time to intervene. Which maybe was a mistake because the Frankenstein monster just keeps on coming. Now to the top. Oh, and Tempesta keeps on going. This is what I mean. Slowly but surely, the monster from Frank, a Frankenstein monster, doesn't stop for anything. Throw fuck. You can use fire, you can use ice. You can throw him in a lake, it doesn't matter. He'll keep on coming back. And look at this. Tempesta. Just using that form and that, that jab just to regulate in that ring. Making, setting the rules. This guy's the man. Look at this. 
This guy should have a manager to control him. Let me tell you that. If this guy, if a good manager gets a hold of Tempesta, you have an unstoppable force. Because quite, to be honest, if I see this guy just twirling around this thing, he looks unstoppable, but he also looks stupid as hell. I don't think there's a brain inside that head, to be honest. Look at this. Does he know that the intention is to even climb that ladder? He just wants to pound people with that. He needs a manager to guide him. And look at that. The athletic ability is amazing. Just smashing through his opponents like they're bowling pins. Take a look at that title that's being suspended over the ring. Pesta now. Where is he going? Is he following Flash Morgan Webster? Why is he doing that? What, what? What's going on here? What is... This is what I mean! So, alright, to my point earlier, you guys get my drift, right? And now, Karai, Corey McGray, Martin Guerrero, three men fighting each other. Three men are in this arena now, in the air, in the area where the, the, the title has been suspended. Wait a minute, there's some stuff going on here. There's some stuff going on. Oh my God! One hand is all it took. One hand is all it took from this demon from the depths. This monster that came crawling out of the abyss with his mouth open for some reason. Maybe because it breathes through his mouth like a dog. Tempesta setting up that ladder and now the ascent can begin. Will this man make it? Will he become the next? He's so close, especially with his height. Will he become the next Unlimited Wrestling Challenge Champion? Wouldn't that be something? But Karai is there to try to stop him. Karai is trying to yank the big man down. Corey McGray now is trying to help out Karai because both men understand that there is, that, that time is of the essence right now and they need to get this monster out there quick. And now everybody's working together. Flash Morgan Webster now trying to make the big monster tumble. Oh, and here we go! Oh! Absolute carnage and devastation! All these men now, all these men seem to realize the urgency. They need to get that monster out of the way. And that monster just keeps on coming. Is this guy indestructible? Somebody please give him a manager. We're looking at a future champion here. If this, this tool can be crafted into a weapon. And there's Martin Guerrero! With the frog splash! Martin Guerrero was feeling froggy. Tornado DDT by Flash Morgan Webster. And now, climbing to the top. Flash Morgan Webster. The mod coming off. Wow, nice senton on the lower back area of Karai. That hurt him. Karai is hurt. Corey McGray now grabbing his opportunity. 
Oh! Flash Morgan Webster now using his head. And now Corey McGray putting on the brakes. Oh my God! Oh my God! Flash Morgan Webster has just broken into, has been broken into bits. Just been turned into a jigsaw puzzle by Corey McGray. Martin now. Setting up that ladder once again in the middle of the ring. Oh my God, Flash Morgan Webster. He's in a bad way. He just got backdropped on that ladder. And now Martin Guerrero putting up two ladders. Well, all I can say is I hope everybody's all right. But it doesn't seem to be the case. And there's Corey McGray. Oh, kicking hard. Luckily, his shins are protected for some reason. The bottom of his feet are not. I repeat, the bottom of his feet are not. And now, Corey McGray with a beautiful, oh, beautiful high-risk maneuver. Double springboard moonsault into that ladder. He sure showed that ladder who's boss. set up. Corey McGray flash Morgan Webster simultaneously. And Karai has been hurt more in this match than I've ever seen him get hurt. Martin Guerrero, we know he's tough. They finally managed to get that monster Tempesta out of there. For some reason, the referees now are pushing the ladders together. They're afraid people are going to get are going to land into the crowd. Oh, ace cutter from the top of the ladder. And Karai now reaches up. Trading blows back and forth with Flash Morgan Webster, who likes to headbutt people. And now, seizing his opportunity, will he take that title back to Britain? Will he be able to get that title into the country due to Brexit? And now, Karai now, vowing to take that back to Berlin, of course, to the west side of Berlin. And now Karai is Tugging that title, the title is still pretty secure. Pushing off, Flash Morgan Webster now. This is the opportunity. This is his chance. And he's got it. He has got it and he is still the champion, ladies Give it and gentlemen. Up. Dieses Leather Matches. Wir abhängen des Titels und weiterhin Unlimited Challenge Champion, der Babyface Killer, Corey!
Or maybe he kills people that have a baby face because they it, it, it pisses them off. Either way, this guy is legit. This guy is bad to the bone. And this guy, above all, is still your Unlimited Wrestling Challenge Champion. Damon Saint here with a spectacular entrance. This guy knows how to rock a guitar, let me tell you that. The rock and roll daredevil. Is he a devil? Is he an angel? Is he a sinner? Is he a saint? This guy is a terrific wrestler. We're going to see him in action here tonight on the Limited Wrestling Dark Chapter. Are you ready for the holy show? I like this, uh, I like this song. Nice entrance. And this guy likes to be back here in the ring. Überraschungsgegner aus dem Iran mit 75 Kilogramm Master Strategist Palevan Nima. A master strategist and a true Persian gentleman from one of the oldest, most ancient civilizations on the planet. This guy is a true man of culture. 
a man of elegance, and he's got a mighty fine mustachio. Very intelligent individual. Very interesting convert confrontation between these two men, especially because the realization is starting to creep up on me, and I think on with both of these gentlemen that whoever wins this will be able to take the next step in their career. They're in front of a sold-out house here, right? This is Dark Chapter. This is the most dangerous show of the year. The crowd is darkened. The arena is darkened. These guys are almost fighting in the dark. This is an exciting confrontation. And let's see who will be the able who will be able to step up. Will it be the holy show? Or will it be the master strategist? Now, the Holy Show is trying to roll through, but there is a master strategist twice rolling with him. Ah! And now, Damon State outsmarted Nima at his own game. I love it. I lo <laughs> Nima respects that, man. Paul Ivan, he respects that. He likes that. This is, this is this type of stuff that he is into. Wrestling strategically, seizing your opportunity, do not move too fast, not too much haste. Look at him go. Very nice, trying to get these pinning combinations in tightly. Nice Iranian mat wrestling work. We know how well these men have been doing throughout the years at the Olympics. Known as one of the greatest traditional wrestling countries the world has ever seen. Paloma Nima seems a little bit gassed. He seems a little bit gassed out here in the early goings. This could work to the advantage of Damon Saint. who is perhaps a little bit more durable as the match goes on longer. And now, Damon Saint got that one well scouted. Now you rattled Polyvon. Very nice. And Polyvon is rattled. Now, fireman's position. Holy show. Uses a very nice steamroller. His opponent is in position. Are we going to see a nice line salt? No, that's very cool. That is very cool. He just turned himself. He just corkscrewed himself inside out only to land on his opponent with an elbow. And the crowd now is calling Pulev on a coward. Almost a 6 one 9 coming that maneuver type maneuver there by Damon Saint, who is very creative. And he's having fun doing it. That's visible. there with a hard elbow oh, 
Wow. Both men are seemingly rolling over each other to get into position for the pinfall now. And now, Nima. Putting on that chin lock. Got him cranked on tight. He's cranking it. Oh, he busted his jaw. Good on that one. Well, as we can see, Nima is not afraid to bend the rules to his favor. <laughs> Whoa, and down goes the pad. Boom goes the knee. And now, now, Paul Ivan Nima is setting him up. Setting up Damon Saint. What are we going to see here? Nice side suplex. Flat on the back of the head of Damon Saint. One. Two, this could be it. No, Damon Saint is still moving, but that brain stem just smashed against the canvas. And, and Nima is showing the referee how to count, but this only slows down the counting because nobody is authorized to register a count but the referee. And Kevin knows that. Referee Kevin Erics knows that and he's telling him now. Of course, Nima, feeling the effects of this match, is taking a breather himself, so he's just trying to stall at this point. Almost tossing Damon Sade into the crowd, but thinking better of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's bending the rules, let's be honest, but you've got to admire the tactics. <laughs> it's almost comical to see that this guy, he has no shame, but he doesn't care about it. So, what he does is quite effective, ladies and gentlemen. And now Damon Saint is going to use his great agility. Flying to the outside of the ring, landing on Nima. The crowd is starting to chant rock and roll. Damon Saint just walked around two thirds of the ring. And there's Nemo, he's now just kicking into the side of Damon Saint. Nemo now, nip, very, very nimbly jumping over the top rope. Super kick being avoided now. Damon Saint spinning around Paulo on Nima and Nima now landing on that apron with the top of his head with the crown of his skull. Damon Saint now pushing Nima in. Could this be it? One, two, no, 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 no. What could have been a victory? 
What could have been a victory for Damon Sane got avoided by Nima now by kicking out just in time. And rock and roll is right, but Nima was there to stop the party. Damon Sane, what? Come on. The first time didn't work out well for you. What did you expect from the second time? But this is very good. This is very well. Great ring awareness by Damon Saint. Damon Saint is just rubbing the chest of Nima now with those European uppercuts. This guy is not a striker per se. He's more of a guy that's very effective when he throws himself into people. When he runs and just throws himself recklessly. Not that I would just tell him to do that, but it's what, what's proven to be most effective for Damon Saint. Because again, the guy's very athletic, very agile, very fast. And now, climbing to the top rope. Oh, and oh! <laughs> a surprise, a, a combination of pain, surprise, and confusion appeared on the face of Palevanima. One, two, and oh, no, 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 says the holy show. Rocking them horns so everybody can see he's still alive. And the holy show, does he have one more concert left to give for tonight? Step up DDT spinning around him like a whirlwind. And now from the top, look at this. Great agility by the Holy Show. One, two, and three. That's it. The Holy Show just walked that rope like a cat. Give it up your pinfall. Holy Show. Damon. And the rocking goes on and on all through the night because Damon Saint just took the win. And let's take a look at some spectacular footage from this matchup. These guys went at it, and like I said, Damon Saint is best when he just throws himself at his opponents. Look at how effective that is. And that's it. What a showing here. Hey ho, holy show! Unlimited Wrestling. Ihr habt uns in ein Gauntlet Match gesteckt und wer immer jetzt Tag Team Champion ist, hat uns nie besiegt. Oh, Colchester fliegt nach draußen, kümmert sich um Monea. Jetzt gibt es hier diesen Package Pile Driver von JD gegen Dominic Fischer. Eins, zwei, drei. Wir haben neu Unlimited Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Und statt uns ein Rematch zu geben, kriegt das irgendjemand sonst. Und uns steckt ihr in den Rumble um die Unlimited Championship. Ich hoffe, ihr habt verstanden, dass es der Titel nicht interessiert. Wir wollen unsere Tag-Team Championship. Bei Dark Chapter kriegen wir unseren Titelkampf als Birch Match 
oder wie waren wir? Ich habe auch durch die ganze Bude im Alleingang. Und ich fasse vielleicht ein bisschen dazu. Ich werde für meine Nationalität ausgebuht, aber ich bin der Böse hier. Weil ich meine, wenn ich jetzt wirklich mal der Böse wäre und sagen würde, nein Martin, ich mache das Match nicht, das möchte ich nicht, wird das so sein, öh, ich Martin Gennaro, ich war kein den titel weil Crouch ist dann Angst. Die ganzen Wrestling Fans werden sagen, öh, äh, Crouch ist dann dieser Bulli. Ich meine, niemand hier von Pete Bouncer haben ein Video, okay? Die haben ein Video gemacht. Öh, äh, wir wurden schlecht behandelt, ich bin Pete Bouncer, nach der Simon der spricht nicht, weil er halt keine Promos macht. Wir wurden uns ja behandelt. <lacht> ja, und dann Limited Office 80 geil, machen wir Kölschmerz. Ist das perfekt noch mal fair? Ich reiß mir den Arsch in diesem Ring auf. Und ihr boot mich für meine Nationalität oder für Sonstiges aus? Aber ich bin der Böse hier. Mir wurde von der Regie zugetragen, dass sowohl Jay Döring als auch Crowchester verletzt ausfallen. Und ich weiß nicht, wie ihr das alle seht. Hier in Thale, da zu Hause. Aber Unlimited Wrestling verdient Fighting Champions. Und da ich passenderweise heute zum General Manager befördert wurde, sage ich doch, es wird heute einen Kampf um die Unlimited Tag Team Championship geben. Mir bleibt leider nichts anderes übrig, als die Tag Team Championship zu vakatieren. Okay, es gibt ein paar Crowchester Fans. Tut mir leid, aber ich habe keine andere Wahl. Wir haben schon ein Team für heute Abend, für das Perch Match. Das ist der Perch Club. Und das zweite Team ist eine Überraschung für euch. Erst einmal möchte ich, dass Crowchester zum Ring kommt und mir die Tag Team Championship aushändigt. Mal, bevor wir jetzt diesen nicht schönen Move gehen. Mir bleibt keine andere Wahl, aber auch wenn er so die ein oder andere fragwürdige Entscheidung getroffen hat, bitte ich um einen warmen Applaus für unseren jetzt noch aktuellen Unlimited Wrestling Tag Team Champion. Du hast das Wort. Let's see what he has to say, because it's, it's something to be forced to relinquish your titles. Colchester is a proud man. Martin, 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 
Wisst ihr was? Ich habe Zeit. Ich meine, ihr habt dafür gezahlt, dieses Match heute sehen zu können. Um mich zu sehen. Und ihr sagt die ganze Zeit, halt die Fresse. Ihr boot mich aus. Ich meine, ich habe Zeit. Wenn ihr wollt, ist das heute das Letzte, was ihr seht. Ich meine, kommen wir doch erstmal zu den offensichtlichen Punkten. Hm? Ich bin verletzt. Und wisst ihr auch, warum ich verletzt bin? Well, tell us. Tell us, Crochester, please. Because of your own devious actions, maybe? Where's JD? Ich bin ein bisschen enttäuscht, dass euch das nicht sofort auffällt, was der Grund ist, warum ich verletzt bin. Setzt euch mal bitte gegenüber von euren Leuten und guckt dich ihnen ins Gesicht. Guckt ihnen in die Augen. Und was werdet ihr sehen? Dorftrottel, die man Unlimited Fans nennt. Denn ihr seid der Grund, warum ich verletzt bin. Ich habe wieder meinen oh, Körper oh, da draußen it. aufs Spiel gesetzt, um mich zu verletzen. Für euch. Was habe right. ich davon? Ha? Ah, yeah. uh -huh. yeah, somebody needs, needs to take the blame, Colchester. Very mature. Maybe act like an adult. Grupa is Grupa is made to be hier, fallen apart part of the scene. Wegen yeah. euch und muss mich auch noch dafür rechtfertigen für eure verdammten Fehler. Ist das perfekt am Affair? These guys had an amazing run and they had the potential to be great champions, but they got, they got injured. Well, that verletzt. happens in the sport ich of wrestling. Verletzt. Wo ist mein Partner? Good question. Wo ist Jay Döring? Sollte dieser Hurensohn nicht auch seinen Mann stehen und hier hinkommen und euch gegenüberstehen, um sich rechtfertigen zu müssen? Warum muss ich das alleine machen? Warum? Jay, Jay. Du brauchst nicht wieder zu kommen. Du bist raus. Ich brauche dich nicht. Mal ganz ehrlich, wenn man etwas gut machen möchte, sollte man es am besten einfach selbst machen. Und ich meine, ich bin jetzt hier. Ihr boot mich aus. Ich dachte erstmal, es wäre meine Nationalität das Problem. Aber seien wir doch mal ehrlich. Oh, now we're starting Auf diesem Boden, wo ich ah. gerade stehe, da wo ihr gerade sitzt, going in a political direction, boot ich mit dir ein Das wird irgendwann russischer Boden sein. Come on, Crochester! It's not because you're Russian, it's because you're a dick! Gehört, oder? Ja, 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 ja. Gehen wir doch mal ein bisschen zurück. Könnt ihr euch noch erinnern, wie ich hier damals debütiert bin? Damals zusammen mit Martin Guerrero in einem Tag Team Match? Ich habe ein Moonshot gemacht, ein 450, ein 630. Ihr habt mich als den besten Highflyer Deutschlands präsentiert. Und was jetzt? Hört auf, ihr seid Heuchler, ihr seid alle Heuchler. Alle, die meinen Namen rufen, Heuchler. Ganz einfach. Ich habe weiterhin meinen Körper für euch geopfert und ihr tut mich einfach raus. Wisst ihr was? Aus großer Kraft folgt große Verantwortung. Und euch Fans ist nicht klar, was für eine Kraft ihr habt. Wir nehmen mal ein Beispiel. Unser neuen General Manager. Well, he's doing a great job so far. Wisst ihr, warum Martin Guerrero sein Amt abgetreten hat? Wisst ihr das? Wisst ihr das? Weil ihr unzufrieden mit ihm wart. Oh Martin, die Beleuchtung ist scheiße. Oh Martin, der Ring geht kaputt. Oh Martin, buch uns doch bitte den und den. Wisst ihr, was das für ein mentaler Stress ist? Kein Wunder, dass er zurückgetreten ist und nicht mal den General Manager macht, weil man das doch im Kopf nicht aushält. Und jetzt ist der kleine Fabsi unser General Manager und es braucht nur einen Moment, einen Moment, bis er etwas falsch macht und ihr werdet ihn auch hassen. Und dann kommt der Nächste und dann geht das so weiter und so weiter und so weiter. Und nun komme ich zu unserem frisch gekrönten General Manager. Wow. Come on, guy. Also, Martin Guerrero can talk for himself. Come on. 
Nobody needs to hear this. Cut this ich guy off. Ich sollte dir wahrscheinlich danken, dass du mir jetzt die Titel abnimmst, dass du mich jetzt vor Pete Bounce und Ivan Kiev rettest, dass die mich nicht umbringen, obwohl ich verletzt bin und nochmal rausgehe. Ich schätze, dafür sollte ich dir jetzt danken. Korrekt? Weißt du was? Du kannst mir dafür danken, dass ich deiner Mutter nicht in die Fresse hau, dass sie so eine Missgeburt auf diese Welt gebracht hat, mit der ich mich jetzt beschäftigen muss. Alright. Wisst ihr was? Wisst ihr was? Alright. Er vakantiert nicht die Titel. Alright. Ich vakantiere die Titel freiwillig. Here, ihr habt auf mich geschissen. Ich scheiße auf euch. Hey, ich come bin on. raus. Ciao. Censor this guy. I want tossing those rings, using foul language, degrading people. Tossing those rings, those those belts in the ring like they're trash. Please stay home, Crow Chancellor. These people do not want you here anymore. This guy just went too far, ladies and gentlemen. He just went too far. Also bis gerade eben hat er mir noch leid getan. Jetzt irgendwie nicht mehr. Aus großer Kraft folgt große Verantwortung. Und ich muss tun was das Beste für Unlimited Wrestling ist. Ich muss tun, was das Beste für euch ist. Und deshalb haben wir jetzt einen Kampf um diese Unlimited Tag Team Championship Belts. Und deshalb ist der folgende Kampf ein Punch Match. Angesetzt auf einen Fall. Und es geht um die Unlimited Wrestling Tag We all know the sounds of those horns, the violin, the eerie atmosphere, the goose bumps. These two men that once held those titles that have just been relinquished by Crochester. The two men who have spread fear and terror throughout the European wrestling scene like no other tag team has ever done before. Defeating everybody destroying everybody and then the title basically got stolen from them they got defeated but it landed in the hand the hands they didn't it was stolen they just they got defeated but it landed in the hands of people who did not even pin them it landed in the hands of Grupa Ismena But now, the Perch Club is back. And they're not only back, they're challenging for a match under their own rules. So it's not just their house. Now, for Ivan Kiev and Pete Bouncer, it's also their match. A bat, a baton, chains. These guys are ready to go to work. They are ready to purge. Catching waves, making waves, and making a name for himself. Dominic Fisher, unlimited wrestling since day one. Been trained by Martin Guerrero in the Herz Gym, the heart of Germany. And his tag team partner, also 
somebody that just loves the great wide open oceans. The pirate captain, the buccaneer, Marcus Monair. And I hope the captain is sober because these two men have got a job to do. Captain Marcus Monier is holding on to his chair. They both know how good Ivan Kiev and Pete Bouncer are when it comes to wielding their weapons. Oh, look at this! And the fight is on! Surfing so Pirates trying to catch the Perch Club off guard by just tossing their weapons at him and just attacking them straight away. I hope it will prove effective. A jump start could prove the entire, uh, to prove the difference maker of this entire matchup. Kick to the midsection. Very nice job here in the early goings by the Surfing Pirates. 
And the crowd is firmly behind them because they believe in these guys. These guys are their own. Dominic Fisher made his name here at Unlimited Wrestling. While Captain Marcus Monier finally, after being active all these years, being a journeyman on the wrestling scene, found a home here at Unlimited Wrestling. Kicked there by the captain. And a clothesline by Captain Marcus Monier. And now these two men fighting tooth and nail. On the ins in inside of the ring is the captain who's also ready to join his partner outside to fight off the perch club. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you're wondering what's going on, this match has no countouts, no disqualification. Let's get it on. If you know, you know, right? And there they go. He doesn't look like he was about to chew Dominic Fisher's ear off. Trying to mess up Dominic Fisher now. Dominic Fisher has been beaten between those chairs and now they're putting the boots to the captain. Oh! Hard shot to the apron with the temple. Again. Now it's Ivan Kiev. Surfer boy is down. The problem with these guys from the purse club is that when it comes to a fight, man, they just keep on coming at you. And they know how to work together as a cohesive unit. They know how to divide and conquer. They know what they're doing. There's still a ladder up there, by the way. There's still a ladder up there from the ladder match. Did anybody see that? Because Purse Club now is giving the crowd what they want. They're chanting, we want table. Well, it, it seems as though they're going to get it, and that's a firm table, let me tell you that. You can tell that that's some fine German wood there, let me tell you. And now, the captain. Are they going to, are they going to run him through it somehow? Are they going to put him on it? What? is their intention? What is their plan? Sevan Kiev is now continuous, continuous, hammering the skull of the captain. And surfer boy Dominic Fisher now. Kick to the face of Pete Bouncer as Ivan Kiev. Setting up the captain now for a suplex. Is he going to suplex him all the way from those steps onto the... No. Not if Dominic Fisher has anything to do with it. Not if he can help it. And the tables seem to be reversed right now. No pun intended. Wait, what are we doing? What? Don't tell me that... Oh my God, even Kiev now! Oh!
let that resonate with you. The surfing pirates now, they need to push through. This is their opportunity. This is as good as it's going to get. They damn near killed Ivankia. He is out, he's bruising better and broken. I don't know, even know him. I'm not even sure they should move him at this stage, man. Count out must be registered in the ring. Surfer boy! Surfer boy is running on pure adrenaline throughout this match. The crowd is firmly behind him as he's now reaching under that ring. This is the most vicious version of surfer boy Dominic Fisher that I have ever seen. And Dominic Fisher walking around with that. Oh, he's not going anything and anywhere because Ivan Kiev just saw something nice and shiny that he wants to play with. What have you done? Dominic Fisher, what have you done? You have knocked on the door and now something is coming through it. Something from the other side. Oh no. Oh no. Oh don't tell me. Referee, come on. What, what, what is... Evo Kiev is being hosed down now. I don't know what type of substance. It might be the dreaded H2O that he is using. And some more of that. I'm pretty sure it's not bleach. I would have smelled it by now. The surfing pirates now. You know what? If the Purge Club would have brought that water gun, I think that would have uh, put some acid in there. And I'm talking about like, I'm not talking about the drug, I'm talking about the, the, the acid chemical. No LSD, folks. That would, would, would turn into a very weird match. No, they would pour, pour some bleach or maybe some lemon juice. That's how you can distinguish the true sadist with just the normal athletes. This Purge Club is a different level. This is a different level of mental sickness as well. That's, oh, and a pirate now knows how to use a little wood. Yeah, come on, Captain, start swinging. Don't hug him with it. That's the stuff that we want to see. Shakalaka, that's the Purge Club, and this is a Purge match.
there goes the spine of Dominic Fisher. And this has turned into a pure one-sided beatdown now. And how could it have gone any different, ladies and gentlemen? This is their match. These are their tools. These are their weapons of choice. They love this. It's not that they're just simple, hardcore wrestlers. No, no, no. These men are wrestlers. But they're sick wrestlers. They are messed up. Their minds are dark. Their souls are pitch black. You do not want to mess with the Purge Club. You do not want to ever meet one of these guys in real life. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, these are two scary individuals legitly 24-7. And the only reason why they're here right now and not in a jail somewhere or in a police cell is because they are getting paid to be violent. Because to many, this is a job. To them, to Pete Bowser, to Ivan Kiev, this is their passion. Inflicting pain is their passion. Let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. These are the type of people that walk around here in European wrestling. And look at this now. Look at this. It's just going to get worse from here on. But Surfer Boy now moves out of the way. Nice in Zagiri. But now even Kiev is trying to grab a hold of him. Nice kick there. Nice roundhouse spin kick connecting with that heel. And now, where is the captain? Where is the captain? This would be the time. And the captain is moving again. The captain is on his way to the ring. Marcus Munir is in the ring. And now, close lining. He bouncer out and taking himself with it in a process. the captain now ah two by four great and barbed wire has just been drop kick between the legs of Ivan Kiev he's gone he's out and now the bouncer turning things around almost slam Duncan Just a two count, but almost slammed Duncan. Marcus Munir threw the mat like a basketball, just bouncing him off. Oh, 
the devious mind of Pete Bouncer has just concocted something. This is not about just hurting your opponent or injuring your opponent anymore. No, 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 no. This has turned into a torture, torture event. Now they're just going to inflict pain. You see, a thumbcat tag will not knock you out. Thumbtack will not take the air out of your body or break your bones. Thumbtacks will only hurt you. Thumbtacks only cause pain and suffering. I do not know why Pete Bouncer does the things he does. I do not know what made him, makes him tick, but one thing is for sure. This guy would be locked up in a mental prison somewhere. Like Arkham Penitentiary in Gotham City. If this guy was doing these things and now, Marcus Monier with the Hulk Hogan chair to the back of Pete Bouncer and this is exactly what it does, nothing. Pete Bouncer now, that one to the skull staggered him a bit. And now, oh no, what is, oh! Dominic Fisher at least got some of that as well. But Pete Bouncer is, oh! That's just, oh! And no, 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 no pinfall. No! Oh. Ivan Kiev with the barbed wire 2x4. Go, oh, going to work, slicing open his opponents, and now Morgan when they're putting on the brakes to save his his face, his forehead from being torn off. And Pete Bouncer now. Oh, he is. Oh, this guy, this guy just went to another place, man. This guy's mind just went to another place, and no. <laughs> Oh, and the thumbtacks are still there. Oh, poor Marcus Munir. And, oh, at this point, you have to really tell yourself what's at stake. And that's the Unlimited Wrestling Tag Team Championship. Because if you do not, you do not have a clue why these men would put themselves through this. Wow. The sacrifices some people are willing to make. What is next? What is there left to do in this match? Oh, now look at this. Now look at this. There, they are using that tape that is normally used to hold the ropes together. And they're now actually making Dominic Fisher a permanent part of the ring for some reason. Lord only knows what they are planning here. Oh, and they're tying up Marcus Monir as well. How can you pin anybody when they're both tied up? When both of your opponents are tied up, where are these guys going with this? What are their attentions? You know what? Don't tell me. Just don't tell me. 
it's worse enough that we have to wait and see because this is just getting way too violent. They're going overboard. Fabius, Fabius Titus needs to step in here because this is this. We could get some. Uh, we could have some casualties on our hands due to these uh, these circumstances. This matchup. These weapons. The ring is a mess. No, 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 no. Do not tell me they're doing this. This is the most violent thing I have ever seen here at Unlimited Wrestling. Look at this. Oh my God. He says the pirate, Marcus Monier, has been crucified like Jesus Christ. Look at him hang. It's almost Easter. Look at him hang. And is a oh Dominic Fisher said he called it. He said I submit on behalf of my team. I do not want my partner to go Even though this is the dark chapter, I never would have expected that these men would go through these lengths, including the surfing pirates, that they would that they would reach these levels of violence unseen. Dominic Fisher, out of pure Pure concern for his tag team partner called the match and said, I submit on behalf of my team. And now, once again, the Purge Club is holding those titles. But this time around, after this violent, 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 violent display that we've seen here tonight, this time around, who will be able to stop them? They already defeated everybody. They wrecked havoc on everybody throughout the years. And now, after this, there's no one left. Ich stehe hier Backstage neben dem ehemaligen Unlimited Wrestling Champion Fast Time Mudo. Fast Time, was ist heute dein Plan, den Titel endlich wieder zurückzuholen? Ich sag mal so, ich habe sehr, sehr lange auf diesen Tag gewartet. Jetzt ist es endlich soweit, dass ich beweisen kann, dass dieser Titel mir gehört, dass ich an die Spitze von Unlimited Wrestling gehöre und da hat sich John von Last Man Standing Match entschieden und Ihr wisst genauso wie ich, dass das kein normales Match ist. Das heute sucht seinesgleichen in Sachen Brutalität, Intensität. Das heute ist Gewaltverherrlichung. Und da kann ich nicht als der Mut in den Ring steigen, den ihr kennt und den ich Tag ein Tag auslebe. Es hat heute nichts mit Disziplin, nichts mit Respekt zu tun. All das, was ich heute in der Umkleide um dieses Match bestreiten zu können, muss ich eine Seite in mir zum Vorschein holen, von der ich dachte, dass ich sie schon längst an Akta gelegt habe. Von der ich dachte, dass sie für immer tief in mir verschlossen bleibt. John, ich werde dir heute wehtun. John, ich werde dich verletzen. Und ich werde am Ende the last man standing sein. Kommen wir zum nächsten Kampf. 
nach seinem Singles-Match angesetzt auf einen Fall. Zum Ring. Er kommt aus Berlin mit einem Gewicht von 115 Kilogramm. Er ist der Held der Hauptstadt. Pascal Spalter. The big man from the capital of Germany. The hero. As he describes himself from the capital of Germany, Berlin. As seen on TV, Pascal Spalter. Pascal Spalter tries to intimidate ich soll Fabian, folgendes mitteilen. Das war eine Menge. Ich hoffe, ich denke an alles. Das, meine lieben Damen und Herren, ist... Alter, eine blöde Schnauze. Mein Name ist Pascal Spalter. Ich bin der Held der Hauptstadt, der Mann der Zeitgeschichte, der Stern von Berlin, euer Lieblingswrestler, bekannt von Berlin Tag und Nacht. Geht Z. Pascal Sparta easily offended. Wenn ich die Halle betrete, dann habt ihr aufzustehen. Ihr alle habt im Takt Pascal Spalter zu rufen. Nicht Pascal Schnauze, Pascal Scheiße oder sonstiges, sondern Pascal Spalter. Yeah, give Pascal a break. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Give Pascal a break. Ich gebe euch jetzt noch mal die Chance. Wir üben das Ganze jetzt. Ich sage Pascal, ihr sagt Spalter. Pascal. What is the crowd doing now? Spalter, habe ich gesagt. Hast du? He just wanted to create a vibe in the in the audience, man. He just wanted Pascal. to create a vibe. Spalter. The crowd is not cooperating. Pascal Spalter is furious now. He is. Oh, this is bad news for who, whoever will be his opponent tonight. <laughs> Pascal. Pascal is. Oh, he's he is mad now. He is mad now. And Fabs is just joining in. <laughs> okay, that was hilarious, ladies and gentlemen. Und sein Gegner, er kommt aus Erfurt mit 95 Kilogramm, Marius Al-Ani! Look at that body, that's the body of a gladiator. Pascal Spalter was outraged earlier on due to the crowd making fun of him 
Brooks looking to take it out on his opponent, but this his opponent is Mario Zolani, the man that moves like nobody else in European wrestling. He is at that point where he has that perfect style, that combination of martial arts, mat wrestling, speed and agility, never say die attitude, but this guy is so flexible. He is so explosive. Bevor wir loslegen, he goes strong and agile. Dein Feuer, mir gefällt sogar dein Feuer. Deshalb ist das hier ein Nummer 1 Herausforderungsmatch auf die Unlimited Championship! Number one contenders match, ladies and gentlemen. Number one contenders match between these two. Whoever gets a three count on his opponent will be the number one contender. We've got a rowdy crowd in the house tonight. And the crowd showing a little bit of favoritism, just a little bit in this match. This is the battle of the last names before we can even get into it. And now, whoa! You know, Alani just tried to move Pascal Spalter. But Pascal Spalter, if he does not want to move, he is not going to move. Oh! But he will move you! Big man now. Oh! Mario Alani stepping through on that hip toss. Clamping on that headlock really, really, really tight. And now Alani getting in position very nicely using his technical wrestling skills get out of this position now trying to take the big man down very nice Brazilian jiu-jitsu techniques and this is the difference maker his technique the thing is with BJJ you do not have to be the biggest and the toughest but once you get the most technique and you make the most out of every motion like Mario Alani does you are a very dangerous competitor. Marius Oani is able to tap anybody from any type of size because he does not need to pick anybody up, even though he can. Once again, this guy possesses the perfect combination of strength and speed and agility as he be is being put on display right here. Is he now sell setting Spalter up for a folding press? Yes, over the top rope. And again, Mario Zolani moving around so easily. The crowd is loving it. And Pascal's battle is not just with Marius, it's still with the crowd. Now, guillotine, 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 it's locked in. Does he have his? No. 
Pascal Spada made it to the ropes, but I think he almost made it to the Adam's apple under the chin of Spalter. And then once again, Mario Zolani trying to get in posi into position to submit Pascal Spalter. And from out of nowhere, a snappy suplex, but it took a lot out of Mario Zolani. Again, back. Back to that same maneuver. Back to that guillotine. Once he gets it, he gets it. But now the power of Pascal Spalder. Oh, Pascal Spalder went brute force now. Trying to get his himself out of this predicament where he's in a position that Mario Zolani keeps on clamping on that guillotine. Once it's sinked in, there is no way out of it. Mari is now running at the big man, sliding over. Big man perhaps tried to go for a tilt to work. Spalter now is being hit with that massive elbow as Mari is running now, running at the big man. The big man sidestepping, great cross body block. That's the agility of Pascal Spalter. You, we should give him credit for the fact that this guy is unbelievable, agile for his size, and now. You can, you can tell by the movement of Pascal Spalta right now that he sees the urgency in putting away Mario Zolani. He recognizes him as a dangerous opponent. And that's what Mario Zolani will do. He will, he will come at you even if you do not respect him. He will come at you until you do. Pascal Spalter now with Mario Zolani into that corner. Imagine your name being Pascal Scheiser. Luckily, nobody's legitimately called that. Wow, the movement of Mario Zolani in Zagiri. Mario's, all Mario's needs is a little opening, and now, oh my God, from the crucifix to the sunset and back to the crucifix. All these pinning combinations, all these type of maneuvers, Maestro Cradle variation. And one of these maneuvers will hit and he will get stuck. Him, he, being Pascal Spalter, his shoulders will get stuck to the mat. And there will be nowhere left to go for his gentlemen. One, two, three. Referee Kevin Erickson. He is right there to administer the count. Putting on the crank is Pascal Spalta. And now going low is Mario Zolani. Oh! Oh my God. No, oh, this guy will not give Mario Zolani another inch. And Mario Zolani is now just trying to kick up just to defend himself, but to no avail. 
Call him Shiza, call him what you want, and now he is using Marius as a toilet. Look at this, just fucking, just, just push, pushing his full weight down on his neck. On that top of the back, he is just, oh my god. Hurting that nose. This is for the number one contendership here at Unlimited Wrestling Dark Chapter. It's Mario Zalani taking on the superhero from Berlin, Pascal Spalter, who is famous from German TV. And he will tell you about that, trust me. He will tell you about that in great detail to anybody that hears, to anybody that wants to know. Um, which just happens to be not this crowd. Oh, Mar is firing back now, firing back with those elbows. What a slap, open-handed slap by Pascal Spalter slapping the taste out of the mouth of Mario Zalani and now whipping him in. Catching his opponent, nice head scissors there. Nice head scissors by Mario Zalani. Creating some distance between himself and big Pascal Spalter. Oh! And everything Mario does is tight and on the button. Look at this. Stand something is coming up. Kick to the midsection. Oh, very nice. And now body slam in Sagiri. He did a sit out. One, two, three. Sorry. I meant Mishinoku driver, not in Sagiri. Even a brother can, even a brother that's on commentary on his own all night long can make a couple of mistakes, people. <laughs> Beautiful sit out, Michinoku driver. Everything connects. You can hear it in the back of the venue. Everything they do connects. These are big man slapping beef. And this match has taken a lot out of both men. It's taken a lot out of both competitors. We're fighting each other tooth and nail here. No! No, Marius now. No, Marius now with the low kicks very effectively. Oh, and that eye rake. But Marius keeps on going even though he's, he's temporarily blind now. Belly to belly suplex by Spalta. Spalta with that weight crashing down on the chest. Oh, talking about weight crashing down on the chest. That's a second cross body block of the match by Pascal Spalta. This guy is doing an amazing job. And now with the avalanche. Boom. 
boom shakalaka, that's a power slam. And that's no, 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 no. Oh, Pascal Sparta thought that was it. He thought that was it. I think a lot of people thought that was it. He thought he squashed him like a bug. He wasn't, he wasn't prepared for the stamina. He wasn't expecting the stamina. That guy, he trained himself to be a machine. Mario Zolani is almost indestructible. And now, submission maneuver clamped on. Mario Zolani trying to fight out, using the elbows. And now, whipping in his opponent in the corner, charging. Oh! He was too fast for that boot. Pascal tried to catch him with the boot, but he was too fast. And now, creating a little diff to distance. Look at that. He is the master at creating distance and then attacking. One, two, and oh! Marius. Intense. This gladiator, this warrior. The intensity just radiates from him. Pascal Spalter now putting that break on, sprawling as his opponent tries to, tries to lift him up. And Marius gets the job done. He's got him in fireman position, but no. Oh, what a chop! What a chop! Oh, another one, but Marius dipped that. Look at that! Exploder to the big man! Exploder! Exploder! And now sending the top turnbuckle. Alani coming at ya. One, two, and no, Pascal Spalter does not want to quit. He's not ready to go home. He wants to become number one contender just like Marius. Marius now needs to realize his time is now. This is the moment. This is where he needs to shine. And now, yes! Oh no! Pascal Spalta had the awareness to sidestep him. Now this is being created once again. Mario Zalani. Oh! Being sidestepped twice now by the big man. Perhaps a little overzealous. And now, a chicken wing submission. A chicken wing submission is in deep now as he got the body scissors. Pascal Sparter has got the body scissors. There is no escaping from this. There is no way out. That's it. That's it. The referee calls it. Gewinner dieses Matches via TKO und damit Nummer 1 Herausforderer auf die Unlimited Championship. Pascal Spalter! Mario Zalani gave it his all. These men basically went back and forth. They might not be the same size, but it's like a power, a power battery in the form of a human being when it comes to Mario Zalani. But the boot strength in the end of Spalter combined with his superior intelligence got him the win. The number one contender, ladies and gentlemen, whoever wins this match, the grueling match that we've got coming up tonight for the Unlimited Wrestling Championship, that man who comes out has to face Spalta. I stand here backstage neben the Unlimited Wrestling Champion, John Badbones Klinger. Uh, John, hast du heute irgendwie Angst, deinen Titel zu verlieren? Angst? <laughs> Ich bin der gefährlichste Mann im europäischen Wrestling. Angst! Dieses Wort gibt es in meinem Wortschatz nicht. Die Dinge, die heute im Ring passieren, dafür ist der menschliche Körper nicht ausgelegt. 
Aber du und Mudos seid doch Freunde, ihr respektiert euch doch, oder? Ja. Ja. Doch heute zählen keine Freundschaften, Mudo. Heute gibt es keinen Respekt. Heute kenne ich dich nicht einmal. Viel Glück. Nobody can stop. Der folgende Kampf ist ein Triple Threat Match, angesetzt auf einen Fall. And things are heating up in Dark Chapter. Triple Threat Action. Auf dem Weg zum Ring, Kontrahent Nummer 1 kommt aus Leipzig mit einem Gewicht von 111 Kilogramm. Chris Titan! We've seen him earlier on tonight. Helping his partner and friend Herbie Vara to obtain a victory over their former Und auch mentor. er kommt in Begleitung von Herbie Vara. Und Red Cat. Let's see if Red Cat and Farah can help the big man Christy Tom obtain his success, obtain his victory. What a night that would be for the former Clue brand, securing two victories at Dark Chapter, the the events after they broke away from Nicholas Clue. From the dark corners of the mind comes the madness. Kontrahent Nummer 2 kommt aus der Nervenheilanstalt mit 92 Kilogramm Chris The Madness Tyson. Think this this guy eats cardboard boards for life or signs or something for for fun? I don't know. He eats cardboard, that's for sure. Every, every time I see this guy, I see him walking around with some sign in his mouth or something. Obviously a very demented individual. Doesn't look like he smells too great either. He's carrying half a sheep around him around with him on his shoulders. Nibbles away on those signs that contain messages that are a bit cryptic. Well, it's nice to have you, Chris Tyson. Let's see your craziness on display. That's what I say. Excited to be here tonight. I just hope that the madness stays away from Red Cat. Clip. 
Food brand, brand talking strategy. Talking to the referee for some reason. Well, referee is watching them. <laughs> he knows. He, <laughs> Just as I said it, he's telling it one more time. We know you're shady, Chris Titan. We've seen you tonight. We've been t paying a lot of attention to you, buddy. Is it like, it's like a Greco-Roman test of strength. Maybe Nick Schreier's enthusiasm got the best of him there a bit. Oh, and look at that big man just scooping him up. Look at that big bull. The madness just pushing Chris Titan off. Because he wants to have him stand straight on his feet when he fights him. And now he's... Well, the madness is just kind of mad, kind of confused. Walking around a little dazed, a little demented. It's always dangerous, these type of people. You never know if they have a knife in their pocket. Or they want to fillet you and wear your skin in direct traffic while wearing it. You know, that type of stuff. And now, okay. He's already biting, he's already taking a little nibble. Rhino, good. Rhino meat, nice. Whoa! This guy just came unhinged. Nice, Chris Titan now trying to secure a pinfall. Going back to his demented ways. Looking around. A bit angered, a bit confused, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but there's the cat, and I was saying I hope he will stay away from the cat, but the cat doesn't stay away from the madman, and that's why you got, now a little girl's in trouble. Now you're a little girl that's in trouble, and that, oh my god. Luckily it takes uh, Chris Madness Tyson uh, uh, some time to register what's going on, because he was already observing her, and the, Next step is usually something bad happens. Oh, that big man just clubbing down Tyson. Where's Nick Schreier? Where did Nick Schreier go? And there the crowd is calling for Clute. Clute, you know, Titan was very animated outside of the ring when Clute was wrestling. Who says Clute is not coming back out here? Just to cheer on one of Chris Titan's opponents. The crowd sure wants to see him. And a madness man. You know, this crazy bastard might be a little hesitant, a little apprehensive at times, a little stalling, a little looking crazed and dazed and confused. But once he gets going, this guy. This guy is a killer. He has the potential to win this match because right from the very start, he wanted the biggest man in the competition. And he's been taking it to that big man. Well, you know, Germans like punishment anyway. Let's, let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen. You've probably seen the movie. Mike Tyson, is, or uh, sorry, Chris Tyson is as German as they come, so he probably likes it, getting his ass kicked. Maybe that's his motivation. He wants the big man, that's all we know. Titan might not be the tallest individual, but he is built different. He's built stocky. He's built like a rhino, like a bull. Like everything is like, like he cannot hurt this guy. You know what I mean? Like he's got like an extra suit on. Kind of reminds me of, what's his name? Ram Man from Human.
Kick out and the madness now. Look at those eyes. Don't give this guy a weapon. Please do not. Another one right in the kisser. And the madness is enjoying himself. It's just another day at the office, man. Isn't that guy walking around in the park with a dead dove's head in his mouth? Just had lunch. Sunset flip for an extrier. In Zagiri and young Nick Schreier now. You know, this guy's courageous. Let's be honest. The average human being would not fight a guy like the madness. Let's be honest. This is a very scary guy. Chris Titan is as wide as a house. This Nick Schreier, still enthusiastic. I like this kid, man. He, I like, look at this. I like this kid. How can you not like this kid? The enthusiasm. And now they're both gone. Now they're both gone. What do you what is a kid to do? Kind of directing traffic now. Full and press. Tyson is down. And now, outside dive. Oh, both Farah and Titan are down. And now, ascending to the top rope. Schreier. Chris the Madness Tyson now turning around only to find somebody coming at him from way high up above. And no! Chris Madness is the bigger man using his strength to power out of that pitting predicament. Titan was there to catch him. Oh, look at that downward spiral. I thought he was going to turn it into a... Oh, Chris Titan just pulled out the referee. Oh, and the referee was already on him. And oh, there's Farah. There's Farah with that armpit smash. That's the Titan Falls. One, two, three. Referee registering the count reluctantly. Given all these matches, we are pinfall. Der Kran aus Leipzig. Chris Titan. Well, Fabs, you saw what happened, man. You declared, just declared him the winner, but you saw what happened. Man, this former clue brand, this Chris Titan, Herbie Farr, Red Cat, no problem, man. We've got a problem. The kids are on the loose now. They have no more parental guidance. Look at Titan just terrorizing his three-way. Great maneuver there by Chris Titan. Nick Schreier, very enthusiastic. Titan Falls, that's usually all she wrote. And I have a feeling, when I look at this threesome, they've only, only just begun.
last man standing. Nobody can stop the badness. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, meine Damen und Herren, Jungen und Mädchen, liebe Menschen hier im Clubhaus Thale, im ausverkauften Clubhaus Thale und zu Hause an den Endgeräten, macht euch bereit für den Main Event! Der folgende Kampf ist ein Last Man Standing Match. Und es geht um die Unlimited Wrestling Championship. Last Man Standing. A Dark Chapter. These two men have met each other before. But never have the stakes been as high as they are tonight. Mudo, former champion. Last time, Mudo. Looking like a combination between Sub-Zero and somebody from a marching band. Got that mouth guard on to be sure he doesn't bite anybody when walking to the ring. And in this match, he will be willing to lay it all on the line because that's the reason why his name was signed on the dotted line. This guy is a tremendous athlete, a tremendous fighter, and a great former champion. Let's see if he can do it again tonight. Has Mudo been hurt? Looks like he's sporting a bruise, man. Is he going in this match injured? Of course, he has extensive had an extensive training camp just to prepare. If he walks in injured, he's up against the wrong guy. He's up against this guy. Look at that skull. The most dangerous man in Europe. The intimidation factor, when this man sets foot in that ring, is unparalleled. His resume speaks for itself. There is a reason why he has been champion for all this time. There is a reason why he left a body count in his wake. Bad Bones John Klinger truly is 
the most dangerous man in European wrestling. And this man will be that man right here, right now, for that title. Last man standing. Spürt ihr das? You can cut the tension with a knife. Auch hier erkläre ich euch noch mal kurz die Regeln. Gewonnen hat der, der es schafft, seinen Kontrahenten dazu zu bekommen, bei 10 oder beim Count of 10 nicht mehr mit beiden Füßen in den Stand zurückzukommen. Verloren hat also der, der es nicht schafft, bei 10 wieder zu stehen. Ich stelle euch die beiden noch mal kurz vor. Zu meiner Linken. Er ist der Gewinner des New Dawn Rumbles. Er ist damit der Nummer 1 Herausforderer. Er ist aus Leipzig mit einem Gewicht von 92 Kilogramm. Er ist das verdorbenste Arschloch im Professional Wrestling. Alright. Fast time fucking Mudo! All his nicknames are a curse. That says something. That says something. Fast time fucking Mudo calls himself an asshole. Zu meiner Rechten, der amtierende und verteidigende Unlimited Wrestling Champion aus Bad Bones City. Mit einem Gewicht von 101 Kilogramm. Er ist der gefährlichste Mann im europäischen Wrestling. Er ist der Blutsbruder. Er ist Bad Bones. John Klinger. And that's our champion. Unlimited Wrestling's very own. Bad Bones John Klinger here to embark on another roller coaster of emotions, another hellacious journey through pain and punishment and sacrifice. The only road he has ever walked, the only path he knows. And that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. That is what's on the line in this last man standing match here at the most dangerous event of the year, Dark Chapter. And here we go. The bell has sounded. This match is officially on their way right in front of this sold out house here in Tala. And here they go, both men just tearing into each other right off the bat. They just took a minute to feel that intensity and now, ah, oh. <laughs> look at Bones. Bones backing off there for me to rethink his strategy is very important in this, uh, let me explain to you guys. Bad Bones is a veteran of the mat and he knows. He knows it's very important to position yourself uh, in the right, correct manner in a match like this, especially when you're up against a seasoned martial artist such as Fast Time Muda. So it appeared for him personally better that that weapons would be uh, would come into the 
into the match. So yeah. So basically what we're looking at is both men getting armed. And oh! And that's what happens. As soon as you get arms in the ring, as soon as you get chairs in the ring, tables, bad things happen. People need to know. So this could be like a distraction tactic by Bad Bones, or this just could be him craving violence. Setting up that chair now, Muda still coming at Bones with that chair. It's Bones' step song. Notice the matter in which, albeit a slightly unconventional, the manner in which Bad Bones has taken control of this matchup. Very intelligently, even though it's unconventionally, this guy has seen it all. He's done it all. Every scenario that can, you can possibly play in your head, he has been in. In every type of fight situation. So he knows what to do. Trust the bad bones. Even though he's in a bad way right now because Muda just showed us what his power is all about and his explosiveness. Trying to suplex Bones back into the ring. Very nicely done. And Bones. Back from the apron to the middle of the ring. Both men approximately the same height. Bones the more muscular, muscular of the two. <coughs> What am I saying? This guy looks like a warlord. The more, more muscular of the two, more muscular than anybody. But then, the man with the fastest feet just took charge with that Fandaminator. He might not have the body type, he might not carry the muscle, but he has the legs and the explosiveness. Both stand up as well as grappling experience. Oh, and Bad Bones John Klinger put the brakes on and gave Mudo a little taste of his own medicine. And Mudo, his cheek is just sporting a black bruise, as I alluded to earlier. I'm just realizing, is that, is that face pain? Is that a bruise? Or did the half of the mask just stay inside, <laughs> on, uh, on the outside of uh, Muto's face? Could be from the mask. The anti-biting mask. And now, the Bones is serving up a little plate of uh, how you like this. Ooh. Right on the money, right on the nose bridge. Very well executed by Mudo. Right on the nose bridge. Kicking the legs, kicking the lower back, kicking everything. Everything in sight. Everything that is out on, out in the open. We'll get targeted. Oh, and Bones now going low. Oh, the power. The sheer brute force. Bones just grabbed the face of Mudo and launched him into orbit. That's how strong John Klinger is. That's the power of Bad Bones John Klinger, ladies and gentlemen. This is no joke. This is a serious and a dangerous individual. This guy, you have, to, you have to understand, John is very emotional. John is a very emotional wrestler. And to him, that title means the world. 
He will not give it up. Not for anybody. Not for anything on the planet. And he will go to great lengths in order to maintain the channel. Look at the size of John Clinton. His shoulders are as wide as the back of a bus. And with that power, he just pushes Mudo into that corner post. Rose now looking for some more equipment, some more tools to do his dirty work. Oh, oh! Well, that is a chair shot. Oh, John now. The only place in this venue with seats vacant and available is the stage. The rest has been sold out. So where does John Klinger go? Exactly. And now John. John has got some devious ideas, I'm sure. Muda looks out of it. He's visibly out of it. And Bones now. Don't tell me. Don't tell me he's going to go and cannonball himself or launch himself into Muda. And oh, Muda had that chair up. That's what you get. That's what you get, Rose, for taking your time with a guy like that. Mudo is dangerous, man. Mudo is a very calculated individual. He is a cerebral wrestler. You cannot take too much time. What is, what is Moodle constructing here? What is that? What is he crafting here? Listen to that murmur going through the crowd. And Bones, Bones just found Moodle's contraption and he's trying to German him on there. You're an Augie! Oh no! Ladies and gentlemen, we have just seen something terrible take place. Uh, let's just hope and pray that Babbo's John Clear hasn't been paralyzed from the Uranagi on the chairs. Oh, Bones. Talking about putting yourself in harm's way. He used that Uranagi to send him straight to hell. And he might have spinal damage. He might have a couple of dislocated discs in his back right now. Oh my God. This is what you get. Last man standing. This is what you get, ladies and gentlemen, when you sign your name on the dotted line of the contract, which says, last man standing match for the world title. This is for the Unlimited Wrestling Championship. So it means so much. So there is no lengths 
these guys will not go through. Well, the back says it all, right? The back says it all. That's what you want. Rip it up a bad boys poster. Kicking bones in the face. You know, the point of this match is to knock your opponent out as quick as possible, but no, 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 no. Don't give him the paper cut. Don't give him a paper cut. Ah! I can't watch this. This is sick. Look at Kevin Eriks. Look at Kevin Eriks and look at the referee. Look at. No, 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 not pliers. Not pliers. Bones, you need to get out of there. Mudo has gone completely insane and the hoist trying to rip his teeth out. And now the referee. Now the referee is just stepping in. Now the referee is stepping in. Oh my god, he tried to yank one of Bones' teeth out. And here he goes again. Oh no, now it's his tongue. Now it's his tongue. He's going to paper cut his son. No, poor soul in the wounds. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. What a folder display of violence. And there's the lemon. No. What's next? Tequila? Come on. This guy's tongue is open. It's split open. It's ow. You sick bastard. That, that. What a waste of human flesh this guy is. What a piece of human trash. No! There's the bottle of tequila! Oh no! No, 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 no! Don't do this! Para salud! In the eye! Ladies and gentlemen, this has been going way too far. What's next? Smash the bottle over his head? Oh my god, what's next? What's coming out of that sick bag next? You unwell demented human being, you fast time Mudo. Who made you this way, man? Look at this! This is illegal in every, in every place of the world except for the wrestling ring. You know why? Because it's no disqualification. No disqualification, people. No countouts. There is no pins. The only way to win this match is when you are the last man standing and out. What is next? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The torture continues. It's cigarette butt time, ladies and gentlemen. It's cigarette butt time. I never took Muda for a smoker, but it's a, he's, a, he's a piece of human filth anyway. He's a disgusting human being. So the cigarette, that's right up his alley. Look at this. Look at this terrible, terrible, miserable human being. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm never biased in matches, but Mudo has just stepped over the line here. He just stepped in now. Bones, this might be like too much for even Bones to take because he's, he's done with the torch. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Feed him to the fire and he'll walk out. Oh! Oh! Mudo, what have you done? Do you realize who you're in the ring with? What's this? Staple gun? Can somebody check that bag already? Oh no, it's no disqualification. What is this? Oh, he's putting in the staples? He's actually putting the staples in. What is this? 
I used it bef this before the staple gun. Does he work at an office or something? Look at this. What's the ne What's next? A ten-year-old bill? You might as well tip the guy. And now, bad bones. You just woke up a sleeping giant. You just woke up the baddest man in wrestling. You just woke up the most dangerous man in Europe, Fast Time Mudo. Do you realize what you did? Bad Bones John Klinger now. As the crowd shows their appreciation to all this violence and torture going on, Bones is looking into the bag and he's, I think he found something he likes. Oh no. Are those beer caps? Are those the lids of the beer? Oh, those are beer caps. Oh my God, come on. Give me a break here, come on. How much torture do you two sick, sick, sick individuals want to put each other through? This is getting, this is getting out of hand. Oh my God, Mudo now fighting out of that predicament. He's lucky he did that, otherwise he would be tattooed with those things. But now, oh! Bones now with his power, Mudo now sprawling! Pedigree? No? Backdrop? Yeah! Oh! He landed in there, but he landed in them ass first! I don't know what's worse, the back of the keister! Baba says bad bones. Bones now going to that top rope. Will he we see his trademark missile drop kick? Oh, not if Mudo can help it. Not if there's still furniture around. Forearm after forearm on that top rope. As the dark chapter continues, Mudo is, as, is ascending those ropes only to deliver. Oh my God! The deadliest Hurricane Rana we've ever seen. He caused John to die through an actual steel folding chair. You can say that again, people. Referee already to the count of five. Six, Babo wants to go. There's no doubting the passion and the tenacity, the perseverance, there's, there's no doubting that, but Did Bones break the count or Mudo before even Bones could break it? Because he knows him. They fought before. They played this game before. Many times before. So he can anticipate what Bones will react to in which manner. And that makes Mudo a great fighter.
And now, Mudo setting up Bones with the chair in the corner. Are we going to see a coast to coast? Yes! With the risk of landing in those beer caps. Mudo sacrificing his own body. Just to try to break Bozes. But nobody has ever done it. Nobody ever drove Bones to the point where he could not continue. Because there's always a second gear. There's always a third gear, a fifth, a, a seventh, an eighth. This guy, I don't know where he gets his reserves. He just reaches very deep down. And the harder the crowd is chanting his name, the deeper he digs. And when he finds that last resort, that last bit of energy, Bones will always push through until the very, very end. Once again, reaching his feet. Last man standing match, ladies and gentlemen. You can only win this match if your opponent gets counted out. Once he's down, he has to the count of 10, which is administered by the referee, to get up again. Bones keeps on getting up. And now Muda wants to do something about it. Brought in a kendo stick. And right here in front of the dark chapter, side unloading! Execution style! Oh! Oh, this is not his first time using a kendo sword, uh, that's for sure. Oh! Shades of Jesse J, that kendo stick wielding pit bull. You know what? Bones is about to. He is about to. He is about to ask for one more. And this one you'll get for free. This one you'll get for free, Modo. And take your shot because it's probably the last one you're going to get. Look at this dramatic scene unfolding! Goal! Look out below! Well, that's how it's done! Wow! Just, I think Muda has been split open. I think he cracked his skull in half. I think Bones collided with that wood against the skull of Muda so hard, his skull cracked open, his skin shattered, and now Bones bring it in a bit. I cannot believe that this guy is smiling. How can you still be smiling after going through an ordeal that he just got, has gone through? And now, somebody is being whipped. Oh, daddy just took off his belt. Oh, Budo is in pain. Oh no, somebody's getting a taste of his own medicine. Look at this. Uh-huh. Oh, he's got John's face stapled to his uh, back. Oh. Oh my God. And I told you, Mudo is split open. 
You cannot take a shot like that without getting split wide open. And the blood now pouring from the from the from the tear in Muda's flesh. As Bones once again fills the ring with anything sharp he can find. Anything metal, anything heavy. He is loading up this ring like the like Mad Max in a Thunderdome. This guy's just going to work now. And now, you want some salt? Here's some salt in your wounds. Oh my god, here have some salt. You wanted to play around with salt, you sick puppy? Hold up. Wait, he's got some more, he's got some more stuff coming for you. Muda is going to be sorry. He's going to be sorry for all those things he put Bad Bones through in this match. Because now he is in a bad way. And now this place has turned into John Klinger's personal playground. kick perfectly timed but wasn't enough even if Bones is knocked out Mudo went down himself so the referee is now counting out both men this match could go through a draw after all Almudo is out with his eyes wide open man he is moving on instinct right now On Bones now, oh, very smart, very, very smart. He was about to get counted out and then just slid outside of the ring. Now his legs are on, the, his, his feet are up again. Look at Bones. I was talking about Mudo moving on instinct. How about Bones? How about Bad Bones John Klinger? Oh no, oh no, not a pedigree, not a pedigree on those chairs, yes, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I have to look away at times because it's just getting too violent, too grueling, almost too much to take for the naked eye. It's just, these guys are doing everything to put each other away in order to become the champion or to remain the champion. That's what it has gotten to at Unlimited Wrestling. That's how much this, this title has, this has meant to Bones, both Bones and Mudo. But to everybody, we all know that this is the number one title in Germany today. Chair shot right in his face. And wow. Oh my oh he's going up again. Bow driver. This is over. This match is over. This match is over. This Listen, Bones took that bump as hard as Mudo did. Especially the first one. Bones? Bones is unbelievable, man. This guy knew he was crashing into those chairs himself. Yet he got up, executed another pile driver, and then his body just gave out. Six, the referee is already at six, and both men are just... They're trying to get up, but everywhere they grab, it's just steel or metal. It's just... Oh, Bones is up! Bones is up!
closes up. He is up. Gewinner dieses Matches und Thomas ist last man standing. Oh und weiterhin Unlimited Wrestling Champion. Der Blutsbruder. Bad Bones. John Klinger. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. The punishment, the torture, the unbelievable damage, the sickness, but above all, the pure badness is what stood out in this matchup. One of the most violent matches I have ever seen and without a shadow of the doubt, look at this. Look at this combination. Without a shadow of a doubt, the most violent match we ever had on Unlimited Wrestling. I cannot believe Bones. He used that chair and he used his brains. And he got out on top. And that's why this guy is still, till this very moment, till this very day, our undisputed champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Bad Bones Show! There is no shame to losing to this man. And today, Mudo proves he's much more than a sick fuck or an asshole or whatever he calls himself. This guy's a man. And he fought like one. And he almost, almost defeated Bad Bones John Clinton. And this is why he is now getting respect from the most dangerous man in European wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rika Bushido. Thank you for watching Dark Chapter. Thank you for watching Unlimited Wrestling. I will see you next time. Right here, baby, at Unlimited.